fast life to fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. Look, we are not the same, this is not a game. I've been swerving through the city in and out of lanes. Yeah, cause if I see it, then I want it, then you better know I got it. Ain't no watches, I'm about to do the damn thing. I'm an outlaw, you can never catch me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we got a good one. Oh, this might be one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, we have Godfather of Harlem. Uh, this is season three, episode six, titled Spooks. So, like I said, we got a lot to dig in on this one. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell and the like button. Helps us grow, helps support us. We'll keep bringing you the great content. <laughs> so, sure. do that now. Um, and now, if you guys want to get started, so mm. wow let's go wow, let's wow, go. wow so a lot of what i was thinking might happen my predictions from last episode kind of came true this week um you know we had discussed how bumpy being out of the doji business could open up opportunities in the cocaine business and he would no longer necessarily be poisoning the community mm -hmm. so he kind of got like a win-win situation there Mm -hmm. um and you know Mamie was excited about it <laughs> you know she seemed like she was down with the fact that he could possibly do some legitimate business but we see that we, didn't quite go the way she wanted it we to go know. well it's she was trying to use some <laughs> not so legitimate ways to help him get legitimate business isn't it yeah. funny isn't it funny it, it, <laughs> you know I mean illegal on one hand illegal on the other it's six in one hand half a dozen in the other you know, I, I, but I love, I love myself some Mamie. But I think now she realizes how Bumpy has to play the game. She sees that you got to play dirty sometimes. Well, yeah, I, I think the biggest problem that still remains uh, is the deterioration of the community. And that's mm -hmm. something that Mamie just really can't wrap her head around. And mm -hmm. right, and rightfully so. And mm -hmm. as we see, Bumpy getting out of the doji business just opens opportunities for the cocaine business. So, but it know, doesn't have the same effect. They won't be like well, junkies, not, like strung out yet. and in the streets. Not yet, but we know. Not where, yet. You're right. Yeah, not yet. Exactly. So <laughs> we we know where that goes. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you know, but and it's interesting how they're formulating uh, the use of cocaine and possibly. I doubt it that they would tie it in because you're talking about such a large span of time, but the use of cocaine versus crack or rather right. the use of cocaine and as it becomes crack. Mm -hmm. So, but I do love the way it's being introduced here. So, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I also like how they kind of, um, it, it, I think Mamie will get a better understanding. Like I said, she'll see sometimes that you do have to play dirty, but she sees also how this game can change you. Because at least pointed that out. Well, yes, she did. Yes. Yeah. So I think that she'll see like, okay, now I can relate more to Bumpy's struggle. Because Bumpy's you know, morality and the way that he deals has been called out time after time after time. Well, and she, from her perspective, she hasn't always been able to see it. She it's like the the Ellsworth versus the Bumpy. And she's always chosen to see him as Ellsworth. Okay, but she has seen it. I mean, remember what she, she ignores said. it, though. I right. Feel like that's she the that's the it. thing. She ignores it because she said to Elise that had Bumpy had the opportunities, given the opportunities that other people have, that, you know, he could be this mecca uh, yeah. when it comes to business. And that's a paraphrase. But basically, that's what she was saying. So, yeah, she sees it and she mm -hmm. understands it. But she just, you know, I, I think, again, it's just that uh, deterioration of the community that she's trying to wrap her head around with bumpy yeah. and yeah. i don't know you might be right you may she may come around and say do what you got to do i understand but i still think she and uh adam clayton powell that they're <laughs> you know they're on a they're on a forge that's just a little different than that and as mm -hmm. long as he's with him but, they, but he used ill-begotten means to, to so, further he his does. causes too and you oh. see he was willing 
to yeah. even with that lawyer, exactly. he told yeah. the lawyer oh, get that application approved, right. they will right. budget a number right. of employees right. and everything. And you know, you you can still get locked up for exactly. lying it's, on application. So and particularly yeah. to federal uh, federal government, you know, when you fall, exactly. send false well, uh, documents to a federal federal <laughs> agency. That's a crime and a federal crime at that. That's fraud and abuse. <laughs> Wait, and look, look, it's just the pot calling the kettle black again. And, exactly. You know, yep. and it's so interesting how they're so quick to do so, you know? Yep. Yeah. And they've made the point to make it clear that the Italians and the mobs, do oh, they do it just as much, if exactly. not more. Definitely. And it goes to show, even when it talks about association, <laughs> bad associations, <laughs> for useful habits, and, right. you know, bumpy rubbing off on maybe, maybe he's, you know, upright and everything, but maybe yep. it's also, you know, well, turned, she's turned a blind eye. To yes. Bumpy. But I say that Mamie's charge of, of illicit affairs mm -hmm. is to basically get her husband out of not only not only the coke, not intentions. only the drug business, but right, intentions. the intentions I are good. Her. But has she thought for one moment how uh, Bumpy might take her uh, for her the, move? the name? Yeah, you know, making that name change, you know, that's fraud. You know, you, you, you're taking my name off my business and you're now becoming, you know, we understand that, but I'm not certain that Bumpy is going to understand that very well mm -hmm. once he gets wind of it. You know, like that, but it, you know, making her making him a legitimate businessman, and then oh, you know, we already know about some of the contracts. The corporation, what they said, even the mob, uh, dummy corporations, fraud. dummy corporations are set up yep. all the time, and we one percent own. Well, you're ready to say, and you know, with these uh, minority contracts and how uh, white businesses have set up dummy uh, 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 corporations to have a minority front to get those contracts yes. and we know that it happens every oh, day yeah. every yeah. minute of every chance yeah. that a contract is uh, uh given out by the government so they're just playing the game the way the game has been handed to them just like the card game that bumpy and uh at least i mean bumpy and mamie oh. were playing at the beginning of the um of the of show and, yeah. mamie, and mamie winning that hand so even that had some kind of uh reference to what's going on mamie always wins <laughs> yeah, I think he'll understand. It will. She, um, uh, eventually. Because she was the one, and she's not, she's she doing had, it in his best interest. Good exactly. intentions, like you said. Well, exactly. But, you know, wrong begets wrong begets wrong. And the next thing you know, you're so deep in it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wrongs don't make it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, if we start digging into this whole situation with the cocaine, so, um, you know, that brings the the uh offer up to bumpy you know and he didn't take it like you know we thought he might he thought he might have been upset now he still might be upset with nat because nat didn't reveal that he was actually using too <laughs> right but um that's another story right but you know it was good of him to bring it up to bumpy and so bumpy kind of explores that option with jose who had already been kind of uh, propositioned by uh, Columbo. Columbo came to him and was trying to get him to buy the Duji again. And Columbo basically was letting him know, I'm loyal to Bumpy. But he was complaining though. He was like, what are we going to do? Like money, a lot of money is riding on this. Your businesses are riding on this. Uh, what are we going to do here? And even if we went with the cocaine option, it's so hard to get into New York and in such small quantities to which Bumpy, you know, He's in the know, and that's where it helps to kind of know the, the dealings in the city, because he knows that a lot of that stuff is seized and burned by the CIA. And of course, Battle has a, a guy inside, so wow. it always helps in having the right connections. And that's what I'm kind of picking up from this show a lot, from Mamie, from Adam Clayton Powell, from Bumpy, like just knowing the right people can get you far. Well, you know. What you know is who you know. And, and also... <laughs> Uh, uh, battles. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Psychic. Uh, oh, her, Arisha. Her psychic, yeah. yeah. Psychic advisor. She she warned him about the friendship and how betrayal comes from French friendship. And we see now uh, how plausible that might very well be. Um, I don't like. Wild, like I, I don't like Wild Bill uh, Harry, Harvey at all. 
and he's really just a a gopher for the CIA, uh, mm -hmm. and he can't be trusted. And we see that maybe Columbo. No, right. I mean, Jose. Jose is the no, 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 no. Pardon me. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Don't. Uh, I meant Jose. Jose. I meant Jose may not be one to trust as well. That's who I'm talking. Um, I think he realized that about himself too. He had yes, that he did. Flashback. He's, He's going like, to sell. Oh, I'm exactly. the one who the Orisha was talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's that's going to sell Malcolm X out. Well, yeah, that was. Do you think that? Do you think that was just? um a ploy to satisfy uh wild bill harvey or no, do you honestly no. think that he's that real happened? about that he's real about it because he's real he's, about he's, that the relationship with the cia he's the one that has the relationship yeah. with the CIA, and he's in order to you know continue getting the cocaine and stuff he's like i already, I already know bumpy is was never going to sell out his friend but mm -hmm. i don't have any allegiance to to him I'll I'll help you do this. So and he has a real disdain for communists. Like that's real. Yes, right. Yeah, and he feels like Malcolm X is a communist, especially since Malcolm is friends with Che Guevara. Yes. So he's like, oh, you know, I'm trying to overthrow throw Castro. You know, he, yes. he feels like his his um he and the CIA in the United States have a common, you know, alliance and yes. stuff, you know, against Fidel. So he is like, okay, if we get rid of the Malcolm X, then that's that's cool he, with me. But he did see how Bumpy was able to control Mr. Wilder. Oh, yeah. He was Bumpy. impressed. And he was now, Bumpy pulled him. some strings. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. how he did that. Well, you know, he's a well read man and he understands the way the game is played. Whereas these guys, which is why I thought it could be, and I'm not saying that it is, I'm just thinking that it could be a, a ploy. And another thing. When he, when uh, Battle was talking to uh, Harvey, and he said, you know, I he had this disdain for uh, Malcolm X, but he called him a Negro. He didn't call him that other N word. And so when he called him a Negro, I'm thinking, hmm, could it possibly be that he's just pulling the wolves over uh, Bill's eyes? It could be. I don't know. No, no, no. He just called him a communist. Negro. Well, Negro. he did say that, but he said that in reference to what Bill was talking about as well, rather Harvey was talking about as well. Um, one other th thing I wanted to bring up about Bumpy, you saw how when Bumpy was given or presented uh, a situation to sell out his friend, what did he do? He went directly to his friend immediately. Mm -hmm. And we know well, in other shows, the was. and we know in these other shows and one that we're doing soon, that just doesn't happen. They 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 fall into it. You know, Bumpy is such a wise person when it comes to, mm -hmm. the, you know. If Bumpy is really your friend, he going to ride with you. He going to oh, ride with you. So make sure that you are not blindsided. Exactly. And so that's what I appreciated about that situation with Malcolm. Although he did eventually get caught up because they were following and photograph uh, photographing him and everything. Mm -hmm. But either way. He still worked it out so that he still had something up his sleeve to take back to Harvey. Like, I know what you and Gambino did back in the day, how your uh, attempts on Castro failed and he embarrassed y'all and cost y'all <laughs> that was funny. Money. <laughs> the models. And he made it clear, like, I got media on my side. I got politicians, too. So play with me if you want to. I got my own connections. See, Bumpy, right. brings, Bumpy not only brings intelligence to the table, he brings his balls. And he's got mm -hmm. big ones. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't Jose mind. said that. He, he puts them on the table with his gun. Exactly. <laughs> what in his switchblade. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> sure did. That's why I was like, man. Oh <laughs> you know, as much as people talk about, you know, the drugs and poison in the community, though, it's hard to hate Bumpy, you know? It's it hard is. to hate on him. It because is. he does just as much for the community. And, you know, I appreciate the friendship between he and Malcolm because... You know, not only did Malcolm, I mean, Bumpy said he wasn't going to turn on Mike, Malcolm. Malcolm said in the previous episode, like, he was confident. Like, he was like, we're good. Bumpy's men are here. You know, they're going to hold us down. Like, he was yep. confident that Bumpy's men was going to protect him. That's why I remember when he was telling um, Betty, like, bring the kids home. We're good. Mm -hmm. we, we, mm -hmm. Bumpy's men are here. So that I was like, so that's how much confidence he had in and bumpy and that says a lot about their friendship absolutely Agreed. and even down to at least like that dude kind of brought at least into it saying like go to her and get her records or whatnot you gotta know this man ain't got about to jeopardize his daughter like that like what are you talking about harvey 
So yeah. that was kind of wild. That was a wild ass of him. Um, he should have known Bumpy wasn't gonna give into that. And Jose said something so. to the effect too. You know, he said you should have known that not uh, ask Bumpy to uh, betray his friend like that. You know, mm -hmm. and, well he should have, but hey. Well, yeah, you know, because some people are rats. Yeah. Bumpy just doesn't have. He just happens to be not one of them. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Well he, well, he said he read up on Bumpy, so he should have known better. You know, there's certain mm -hmm. things you should know about a character, you know, after you, you've given the dossier about him and then you you decide to switch, you know, uh, flip the switch because you think you're all that. You know, mm -hmm. some people think that, that people will do anything for money and some people That's will. True. And there's some, some people, people will. that will do anything for money. And he right. just found out that Bumpy Bumpy's is not. not one of them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about at least, but I want to dive down deeper into that situation um, because, you know, she actually uh, talked to Malcolm. And Malcolm was basically letting her know, like, get out of your own way. You know, if I can forgive this man, then you can forgive him. So she actually went through and sat down with uh, Henry, I'm sorry, Omar for dinner. And his mom, Khadija, joined as a chaperone, uh, to which, you know, it started off well, <laughs> started off very complimentary. They were being very pleasant with one another. And then Malcolm's name came up and things started going left. <laughs> Uh -huh. and she started getting disrespectful with Elise and telling her she was a fool and all this other stuff so I don't know um I think that's dead that that whole relationship might be yeah dead and I have water. to say and I have to say kudos to uh Elise uh because she saw what she was getting herself into with that you know with the family mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you when you get involved with somebody their family is just a bigger part of yes. the situation you as marry, well. You marry more than just the person. You marry the yes. family. Yeah. And for, so but for her to just... come out and call her, what did she call her? Oh, uh, a, fool. a fool. A fool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there are just some things you don't do on the first meet. So, <laughs> right. You know, she could have kept that to herself. The question <laughs> is how Omar is going to take that in terms of uh, dealing with his mother. Mama blew it for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He probably going to come to Elise and say, you know, I check my mom and everything, and this and the other. But I think Elise gonna be like, "That's it's that's it. That's a wrap." When a woman yeah. gets she up from moms on the hands list, she gets yeah. yes. Look, when a woman gets up from the th uh, the table at a restaurant and walks out like that, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a clear she's sign. Done. That's a clear she's sign done. that she's right. saying, "Y'all can go to hell." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, because we ain't leaving no food. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Where's her good outfit on this night? Right. Exactly. Right. She put on that good outfit and she's got food coming that she doesn't have to pay for. Exactly. It takes a minute for, you know, she had right. to think about that one. So, right. hey. <laughs> now, I want to move on and talk about something I know is going to get y'all fired up. My girl, Stella. <laughs> Man, this woman, she is just off the chain. Um, So, Stella. <laughs> She talks to her father's lawyer and she makes it clear that she wants to be out from up under Colombo's thumb. And in the process of explaining that, she throws into the conversation mm -hmm. that Colombo is making sexual advances at her completely false, you know? Yeah. And not, it, it's, I'm like, Stella, you had to know that this lawyer is not just going to keep that to himself. Mm -hmm. You had to know he was going to take that information back to your father. Right. Right. And she she did know that. She knew that. She mm -hmm. knew that. She just didn't expect it to go that far, which right. she should have. Expected. Exactly. She should have. She knew that. I, I, well, mm -hmm. she's, I mean, well, first of all, to tell the lawyer, that's not your lawyer. That's your your, your dad's lawyer. So that you know, client privilege that the lawyer has is with, uh, you know, with the client, right? Yeah, with the client, so so why you would say something like that and not expect it to go back to your dad is kind of, I thought you had more sense, common sense than that, Stella. But well, she was trying to manipulate the situation. She, she was, was just trying to get out from protection. She didn't think it was going to end up in a hit. She just how thought do that, you tell a man that his daughter is being approached sexually and not expect a huge fallout from that by Amen. someone that works for you? Exactly. Right. Yeah, so Listen. it's nuts for that. <laughs> Listen, nuts. my dad ain't even a monster, but he might have said he might have done the same thing. <laughs> might, wait, 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 wait. Might, might. <laughs> yeah. I can ninety nine point nine tenths of a percent be sure I could, I could that he do. would do that because I'm a hundred percent sure I, that I would. 
See, I can't exactly. say a hundred for your dad. I know it's close exactly. up there, but I know a hundred percent I would. So that alone gets Stella on the who can get the hands list. Amen. But then she takes it a step further. So she goes to the priest and he tells her to try to make it right. And she re uh sets up another meeting with the lawyer and he's like, you know, it's what's done is done. Everything's already in motion. So now she's left with no other choice but to go back to Lombardi. And they come up with a plan. You know, he finally reveals oh. to her that yeah. he was the one that actually killed Ernie. But remember, she threatens the lawyer with the same sexual She sure did. I mean, you know. she, yeah, so that gets her right. number, you know, second uh, knock the on the who can get the hands list. And yep. then the third one is when she actually sets up the plot to take Lombardi out. <laughs> so... I knew he was gone as soon as he told her that he was the one that killed Ernie. When he said yeah, that, I was like, yes, up. I what? said, she going to set, set him up. She was like, oh, I thought it was my father. I said, up, she going to kill this dude. But it did seem drop? for a second. It seemed for a second like she might have had sympathy for her father at that point in time. Like, uh, okay, maybe he did try to stop it. Yeah, yeah but her, you saw her face drop when he said that. that yeah. I had to take right, my, oh. when, when that face yeah. dropped, you got to know what that means for Stella. Yeah, this awesome. guy. <laughs> but the interesting part, though, she was trying not to have someone killed based on, you know, uh, what being blood guilty and blood guilty. I and was then like... you, and then you have a body on you, another, again, right? another body, <laughs> another body. But this one, you shoot in the back of the head. The man never saw it coming. Well, he was, because he was gonna, she was avenging Ernie, and number yeah, two, but she, my, was saving, she was but, saving Columbo. But right. the conflict that you were having with yourself. On the one hand, you don't want to be responsible for another body dropping. And here on this hand, you actually drop a body. So No, it's not about just any old body. She drops who she wants to drop. We yeah, learned I'm that. Saying, though, but she and she said, just didn't want Columbo's blood on her But hand. she said she didn't want any blood, any more bloodshed based on her. And that we was see, a lie. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's where I'm headed. Big lie. Yes, I agree, Ron. She definitely is being a little bit hip hypocritical, hypocritical there. That's exactly right. Yes, but she, I think she, um, I think she just couldn't deal with having Columbo's guilt. I mean, uh, blood on her hands because she, she really does have some kind of feeling for him. I don't know if it's romantic or not, but she does care for mm -hmm. him to some extent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I just she don't just... think she could have lived with that one. No, and the dude Lombardi was like he he was inconsequential to her it don't matter either way if he stays or goes so it was easier for her to be you know get him out the way and not really feel too bad about it well so now, does Columbo go back and 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 talk to her dad about she killing uh Lombardi uh not that he would do much to her of course but you know, right that's but... an interesting conversation Columbo might have because Stella's going to have to talk to Chen directly and tell oh, yeah. him that she lied. Yeah. Because if Columbo tries to go back to Vincent, he's going to be like, why are you still alive? And why did right. you make these events at my daughter? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's not going to work out. And they no. said that he really blew up and flipped tables and they had to put him in solitary confinement. So getting to him at all might not be possible. And see, and, and for Columbo, <laughs> he doesn't even know why that there was a hit put on him put out on him like that though I right mean, it was never so really Stella gonna have to fess up to him too she's gonna have to yeah she T gets Tiffany, plans Tiffany, you looked you looked a little uh <laughs> no because i'm because i'm thinking about um what i read in real life about colombo okay. you know mm -hmm. the real colombo and stuff and i know that you know eventually he was killed you know and i don't know if that's going to be portrayed on this show or how it's going to be portrayed Mm. But you know, okay. when I read up on him, he he was eventually killed. So that's what I was thinking about. Like, hmm. okay, yeah. Well, this seems like it could be the perfect setting for it because although Stella tried to spare him, he still has that you know hanging over his head that she lied, that lie she told. Because once so. that once that is once that is put in place, like they said, it's very hard to stop. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be exiled first. I don't think he was immediately killed. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be exiled first. That's and then fine. down the line, um, something happens to him. He's killed. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. But yeah. this was an excellent episode. I feel like there was so much going on. And I love how they kind of make the, the big situation, like whatever, it's the conflict. 
and then they walk us through how it's solved and it's always very clever and it's mm-hmm. not always like super like obvious because I kind of had a feeling that Bumpy would go into the cocaine business but I didn't know all we of said the that, yep. workings and what was going to happen to lead us there so oh it was so good I did you it. did you notice that Chance was the one that kind of set up the um the pitch for Nat- 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 yeah yeah like, yep. oh, and that was that, that was a, a good, good idea. Thing. And I think that was better coming from Chance than that coming straight. It was. Up, it know? was. Yeah. 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 Bobby might have shut him down. <laughs> yeah, <I think laughs> so. And stuff. Yeah. So you know, it was yeah. it was cool for Chance to tee him up. Yeah. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. the pitch and everything. Exactly. And also, did y'all notice that Mamie? Um, I think her conscience is bothering her because she was a little tipsy. This, yeah, too. She was drinking a little bit, and I was like, That's her conscience is bothering her. Well, I well, I don't. I well, I don't know about her drinking yep. habits, but she was definitely tearing that bottle up. Uh, that's that bottle something, that's what I said. Something was on her mind. It was probably the only way that she can go through with falsifying documents is exactly. to be under some kind of influence. Well, she seemed to be pretty okay with that from almost jump. I mean, how to do it and knowing that it's illegal. I mean, th- theoretically, when she found out. I don't think she was tripping too much about it. She, she, she's a by any means necessary person too. Um, she justified you know, it in her mind. She, she, yeah, yeah exactly. but it, it still was bothering her because that's why yeah. she was well drinking. Yeah, I don't know. But then again, when she finds out, you know, um, Clayton Powell comes to the house and says that your application was rejected due to the fact that the government did its due diligence. Yeah, she was but it was worried. really the fact that the Italians Correct. sabotaged but was, it. <laughs> but she was also yeah. worried that, you know, it may backfire and come back to her. Yeah. And, you know, that that may have frightened her a bit. So it'll. I can't wait for uh, the next episode to see mm-hmm. how this gets uh, this matter gets straightened out. Yeah. yeah, she still has to find out about this artist because I don't think we didn't <laughs> see it this episode. Right. But she has not found out yet about the artist. Yeah. It doesn't have it doesn't appear to me. Well, it doesn't appear. Yeah, I. To me, though, that's um, kind of water under the bridge, if you will. Um, is not you can't do anything about it, and I don't. I don't see her really attacking um, Bumpy about it so much. She may argue with him to a point, but you know, like Bumpy said, once a junkie, always a junkie. In that regard, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> just because he turned artist doesn't mean he's not a junkie, and we find out that. <laughs> <laughs> that's people, what it is. people can't recover well, yeah no, I, they can but you know it takes it takes a while i'm not and please don't write me in thinking that i'm saying that you can't recover from being a junk but being any kind of under any kind of you know um uh addiction whether it's cigarettes alcohol or any other type of drug yes you can overcome it but well i can't um I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. I didn't want to cut your thought off. No, just that with this artist, to me, I, you know, <laughs> I think he was still kind of high to paint that picture in the first place. <laughs> I, I'm just, you know, you heard, y'all know what I I thought about that picture, you know, last, oh, no. uh, last uh, episode. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to be on something to paint that about a man like Bumpy. So <laughs> right. as far as I'm concerned, he was still using, and he just happened <laughs> to be sober at the time. <laughs> You might have a point he there. He wasn't though. Yeah, I, well, I, I don't that know. Tongue, that tongue lashing from Bumpy pushed him over the edge. You think? Okay. I, yeah. just, <laughs> I just think he. I think he needed more of what he already had. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to see that. That too. How Mamie responds when she hears about that? She's gonna be upset. Mm-hmm. Um, I also can't wait to see how Bumpy responds when he hears about the actual betrayal because he knows that there's gonna be one. Yeah. So how he's gonna deal with Jose? Yeah, I think that's they're gonna be at odds. And he can't afford. They're that. gonna be at odds. And he really mm-hmm. can't afford that. So yeah, because especially if he finds out that he's the one that like, because you know this, you know where this is leading. Malcolm is is dying at the end of this season. We but, already said well, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But could it be that Bumpy don't really need Jose anyway because he kind of right. made that deal with Harvey independent of Jose. Well, right. they just really introduced them. Absolutely. And I was like, he's really not that big, a big part of it. And, absolutely. And Battle needs him more than uh, uh, he needs Battle because, you know, like you said, the drugs are now running through Bumpy. And mm-hmm. so if, if Battle's going to be a part of that, 
he, he's going to have to, but but again it'll be real interesting how this thing with malcolm battle and bumpy works out it's, it's yeah I can't wait to see that segment yep me too i'm looking forward to it yeah. <laughs> so this was a was very a very great episode i thoroughly enjoyed it um you guys have any other things you want to add any comments or predictions yes, any more so additions to the hands list <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the subscribers were right about Stella being a Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it don't take much to figure that out. No, <laughs> that girl just got bodies falling everywhere mm -hmm. around her. Bodies, bodies, bodies. As Franklin says, <laughs> <in> snowfall. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we definitely should remind folks to check out our interview with Ilfinette Shadera and Antoinette Crow Legacy, yeah. Elise and Mamie. Or maybe in the least so that was such a wonderful um conversation with them so if you get a chance please check out that interview on yes. our playlist absolutely I ron you got that. anything else except that i go by that interview every other day just to <laughs> <laughs> just stay ready huh i'm just saying you know beautiful you need to check it out find out what i'm talking about particularly you guys go see it <laughs> Ooh, that's yep, funny yep. <laughs> okay guys well make sure you drop down in the comment section give us your thoughts on this episode as well as your predictions for the remainder of the season um also make sure you uh subscribe to our channel like the video and click the notification bell uh, we are also on instagram twitter facebook tiktok follow us on all major social media platforms uh, to keep up with what we got going on there as well uh and i think we've kind of knocked all of our uh announcements out so uh on that note we are going to call it a night and we will be back next week have a good night thanks bye 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 okay whoa look they, they can never keep me down i'm going and if i ever fail the snow i'll go again i never quit because i know that every loss may lead to another win i'm going up I, I bet when I land, they gon' tell me it's luck again See that I'm winning, it's harder to watch I'm setting the stage, you should give me my prize You ain't got a soul, you lacking the spirit You talk out your neck, I'ma show you I'm with it I've been really happy you to sit and watch me win again and win again and win again I know it's probably getting on me and when I'm sending them So if I ever win again, it's nobody